Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. We're sitting here once again with Kurt, and we wanted to have an interesting conversation about the many uses of hemp, right? So we're pulling this. We had seen this article from the Ministry of Hemp discussing the, the 82 uses of hemp that people don't really seem to understand just how versatile this plant is. So, Kurt, how are you doing? Are you ready to dive in? Oh, absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me uh, again. Oh, of course. So let's, let's just kind of talk about some of the more broad things. So you can use hemp from food, you can use it for clothing, you can use it for construction, which is something I think I've heard somewhere before, but you can use it from essentially anything. So let's dive into the first one. Let's talk about food, right? So hemp is something that you can eat. It's digestible. It's got strong health benefits. You can drink it. You can make tea out of it. Kurt, do you do any of these? Well, personally, I do. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, um, the biggest producer of hemp seed right now is actually Canada. And uh, because hemp has had such a head start in uh, Canada relative to, say, the United States, because uh, hemp became legal back in the uh, late 1990s, the, uh, the farmers grew uh, hemp generally for uh, the hemp seed as well as hemp oil. Um, so you would actually press the seed and uh, take the oil out of it like, uh, say, you would with olives. Okay. So um, that's been the predominant food uses now, certainly you're getting, uh, because they were extracting the cannabinoids and in particular CBD, you're getting uh, foods that are infused with, um, with CBD as well, uh, all across the board, uh, different types of, of foods for that. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's been um, a continuing growth area for the hemp plant. Yeah, and um, going, to, going into the next category, which is like clothing, which you can essentially make anything out of hemp when it comes to clothing, shirts, jeans, shoes, jackets, backpacks, hats, sunglasses. I mean, it's just such a versatile fiber, right, that you can use it for a lot of things, and the hemp fiber is actually pretty durable versus the cotton fiber, right? Well, that's just it, is the, the hemp fiber is longer and stronger than the, um, the cotton fiber, it's um, uh, the hemp is a lot more eco-friendly when it comes to growing the plant versus cotton. And if you look back historically over, you know, hundreds of, well, even thousands of years, uh, the um, everywhere going back to, uh, you know, Egyptian days where they were using the, the hemp fiber uh, for, uh, well, even building, um, you know, there's, uh, for example, the Allura Caves in India, um, they, uh, 1,500 years ago, were incorporating hemp into their building, and those are still standing, and they credit that for um, being still in place. You know, Kurt, you, you bring up good points when you talk about the historical, historical value of hemp, and it's almost like uh, man has separated itself from one of its most useful tools in modern history by, by taking hemp out of one of our main cash crops and agricultural you know, successes. And um, going into what, what it is that you've used it for and talked about is, you know, construction, building, insulation. There's, there's many uses to hemp in construction too. And it's unfortunate that we didn't evolve our construction materials along with hemp. And we're kind of playing catch up now that we've seen all the benefits for it and legalization is, is kind of really easing up on hemp, right? Well, exactly. Uh, you're, that 80-year that moratorium on hemp has dramatically um, slowed down the development of the, the whole industry, especially when it comes to building materials. Uh, you know, certainly, as we've talked before, Europe is, is quite a bit ahead of us in terms of utilizing hemp for insulation as well as a general building material. But hopefully we'll catch up on that uh, here in the coming years. Uh, research is, uh, has been an important part because if you look back, uh, hemp was used, especially on the fiber side of things, uh, tremendous amount of clothing, sails, ropes. Um, it's, it's about the, the fiber. The fiber is um, because the hemp plant grows so tall. And in such a short period of time, the fiber that wraps around the stem, it, it actually ends up being very long. Mm -hmm. And so that, that strong fiber it can be used for a lot of different things. And we're now starting to see the uses of uh, the fiber coming back. And that's becoming a more important part of the, the hemp crop itself. Yeah, and um, going, going back, I'm pretty sure the U.S.'s main documents from the Constitution to Declaration of Independence was on hemp paper. 
Like, I don't know why we, we then shifted to paper, paper from trees, but hemp going back to the, the this, when you were talking about environmentalism, hemp is so much better than trying to, to cut down a bunch of trees. It grows faster. It's more compact. You use less resources and it stops deforestation as well. Exactly. It, it's a renewable resource that grows so quickly that you can basically replace the trees with the hemp and uh, pretty much all the uses for uh, that come out of uh, the wood for that comes out of the trees can actually be replaced with uh, a hemp product. Yep. And uh, now they're talking plastics could be hemp could be utilized for plastics as well, which as I think everyone knows at this point, plastics is one of the biggest detriments that mankind has did in recent years with giant swaths of plastic floating in the ocean with tons of our trash. It just doesn't break down. It's not super biodegradable. And having hemp as a potential, I think it's from the hemp oil itself because plastic is very tied to oil. It could, it could offer a really strong alternative. Well, uh, bioplastics is, is definitely the way of the future. It's, it's coming on stronger. They're doing, again, more research, and uh, we're starting to um, see more of it develop. The biggest problem has been that it's um, the cost-effectiveness uh, of these alternatives. Um, any of the carbon-based uh, products um, don't have the, um, the, some of the expense involved in some of the bioplastics at this point. And so that when you compare the two, it's, it's difficult to be cost effective, which yeah. makes it hard to be adapted. Sure. Um, but that is beginning to change. And, and large scale adaptation of these products will make it more cost effective. Agreed, agreed. And um, I wanted to cap this off with a funny one in that, you know, you could live your whole life. You could be eating hemp food. You could be wearing hemp clothes, living in a hemp house. And when you finally pass away and lose your mortal, mortal coil, you can be buried in a hemp coffin. <laughs> it's the only plant, uh, the only plant on the planet that can feed, clothe, house um, everybody. Agreed, agreed. All right, Kurt. Well, thank you for coming on. We'll leave a link to the uh, article below so you guys can read it as well. About to say it's it's really informative and it talks about way more things than we could squeeze into a short video. So I recommend giving it a read. And if you guys have any any discussions about the hemp plant, anything that you think you could use it for, leave it in the description below. We'll be very happy to talk about that as well. And thank you for watching, Kurt. Thank you for coming on. My pleasure. Thanks a lot.